Hi everyone, this is Andy from Med School EU, and we're going to begin our second lecture of the biology section from the IMAT specifications. And uh, the second unit will include the cell as the basis of life. And the first two topics that we're going to discuss in this video will be cell theory and cell size. So let's talk about cell theory first and uh, lay the foundation for um, biological science. So cell theory was proposed by uh, Robert Hooke and uh, he was an engineer, he was a scientist who was uh, using the original microscope as uh, we've got here in the image to uh, come up with these three uh, laws and these three generalizations of, uh, of living organisms. So here they are. Number one, all organisms are composed of one or more cells. Number two, the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms. And number three, cells arise only from the division of pre-existing cells. So this is true about all life in general. And uh, l let's uh, discuss each one a little bit further. So number one, all orga organisms are composed of one or more cells. So on Earth, there's, um, there's plenty of organisms, uh, multicellular, um, unicellular, like prokaryotes, eukaryotes, plant cells, animal cells, fungal cells, protists, bacteria. These are all composed of one or more cells. There's no uh, organic there's no living organism that is composed of inorganic substances uh, and that could live on its own, right? So this this uh, generalization is uh, holds true to this day. Now, number two, the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms, and here I uh, I, I attempted to draw a uh, a cell and it's, it's bursting, so it's an open cell. So if you are to split a cell, right, so if you were to slice a cell and uh, to see if uh, a cell would sur survive on its own, and uh, usually if cells are broken up, the property of life is lost. They aren't able to grow, reproduce, or respond to outside stimuli in, in a coordinated, potentially independent fashion. So this confirms the second uh, tenet of the cell theory because life as we know it does not exist in units simpler than just individual cells like here. So this confirms the second tenet. Now if you're looking at the third, cells arise only from the division of pre-existing cells, meaning that cells can only arise from um, asexual and uh, sexual reproduction, asexual and sexual reproduction. And you cannot just get a cell coming up on its own without uh, without cells do uh, going through sexual reproduction, mitosis and meiosis and uh, or or asexual reproduction like bacteria. You cannot get a cell just coming up out of nowhere from from matter. It needs to come from pre-existing cells. And so all these three uh, generalizations hold true to this day. So next let's discuss cell size and we're gonna go over just a, a couple of um, examples just to give you an idea of, uh, of, of how big and how small parts of a cell are. So before we do that we need to know are units of measurement. So some of the basic units and conversions that you should know for the IMAT exam are, are here. So we've got one meter that uh, and we got centimeters, we got millimeters, micrometers and nanometers. So uh, you should know the conversions of if you are given a, a number of uh, millimeters how to convert them to nanometers or meters and, and uh, so forth. So you're going to need to know the units of measurement in case a question comes up in terms of uh, the cell sizes and, um, 
and evaluating exactly how big or how small they are. Now, with that said, let's look at an example. So we're going to begin with the smallest and go up to uh, the largest, some of the longer, largest units of a cell. So first, here we have uh, two oxygen atoms, double bonded, so this is an O2, so this oxygen gas. The diameter of an oxygen atom is 0 0.07 nanometers. So it's, it's in nanometers, that means it's, it's a billion, right? This is 0 0.07 of a billionth of a meter. Just imagine how, you know, a meter isn't very big, but imagine how tiny a 0 0.07 billionth of a meter is. Now, if we look at another example, going a little bit bigger, uh, we're looking at a DNA double helix structure here, and this the width of the base pairs, the, the DNA double helix, the width of it is 2 nanometers. So this is a, a couple units higher than the uh, atom. Uh, however, it's still quite tiny, right? It's, it's, it's very small, and we're going to look at how, how small this is in comparison to the entire cell or just the nucleus. The next example here is shown the cell membrane. Now the width of the cell, the thickness of the, of the cell membrane, the uh, phospholipid um, bilayer is nine nanometers. So it's, it's several times bigger than the width of the DNA double helix. So it's uh, in comparison, if we take a look at uh, the next bigger structure, and this is a virus. So uh, this virus is, it's one of the larger viruses, 100 nanometers. Viruses are usually uh, typically smaller, but this is an HIV virus taken under the light microscope. And uh, this HIV virus, is uh, is one of the larger ones. Influenza is another large virus that's also around 100 nanometers. And you can see in comparison to the thickness of the cell membrane that it's, uh, it's, t it's more than 10 times bigger than the thickness of the membrane. Now, looking at the next example, next bigger example, we're moving from nanometers to micrometers. And in micrometers, we actually have, uh, this is E. coli bacteria. So these, each of these uh, uh, grains here, these are all each E. coli bacteria. The width of E. coli bacteria labeled here is one micrometer. Now one micrometer, that's going to be 10 times the size of uh, a virus one of the larger viruses, right? The next example, we're gonna start looking into the cell size and, uh, and the, some of the structures and the organelles associated with cells because they are in the range of micrometers. So as you can see here, this is again taken under the light microscope and what we see here is a mitochondrion. And the mitochondrion is typically around one to five micrometers. And uh, if you can see here, it's, it's comparable to the E. coli bacteria in terms of size. And this is one of the reasons why mitochondrion is, uh, there's a theory that mitochondrion was, has evolved and ha used to be a bacteria that lived on its own and eventually it migrated and uh, in some ways it evolved to coexist with other cells and becoming the powerhouse, producing lots of ATP for the cell. However, the size of it and the structure, it even has its own uh, genetic material. This uh, could, could have been a bacteria at the start of evolution on Earth. So now we're going to move on right into the, uh, the entire cell structure. So as you can see here, this is a, an animal cell. It has that round shape without uh, the cell wall. And uh, th that would be the nucleus here. And the, the size of it is typically 
around 5 to 30 micrometers. And, and here we're just talking about a typical animal cell. So um, because there are animal cells that are much bigger than this, for example, the human egg is, is about 100 micrometers, which is a um, couple times bigger than just a typical uh, uh, just a typical cell. And uh, the final example here, we're going to discuss uh, the plant cell. So if you can see the arrangement here, it's got a unique shape because plant cells are tightly packed together like this, uh, one after the other. And uh, in the middle here, so we've got the nucleus and we have a central vacuole where a lot of the storage of nutrients takes place. And uh, this is again taken under a light microscope wh where you can see just uh, the, the little structures associated with, uh, with the cell. Now, you need to know that a plant cell is on average, averages to be a little bit bigger than uh, the animal cells as they are 10 to 100 micrometers big. And uh, how does this compare to uh, what we can see with, um, with an unaided human eye is that we can typically see one millimeter, right? This is something we can see on a ruler and we can kind of look into and we can uh, really picture that. Um, however, this is still a, a couple of times smaller than that one micrometer. So again that is not detectable by by the unaided eye now in terms of the imat exam and the things that might come up uh, with cell size and cell theory is that uh, you might get a question that asks how uh, in terms of ranking so if you were given a couple of structures for example you're given a mitochondrion a ribosome a chloroplast and the dna and a plant cell and an animal cell and you have to rank those from smallest to biggest. So you're, you're going to need to know just some of the basic structures just to evaluate really how uh, just the range at which, at which these uh, structures exist in terms of their size. So you, you're really going to need to know how to rank them uh, in order of uh, largest to smallest or smallest to largest. And typically those are the kinds of questions that will come up. Um, However, the most important thing that you would need to know is that a plant cell is generally a little bit bigger than the animal cell and the, the units that are associated with them, which would be the micrometers, they're typically measured in micrometers. Then you are going to need to know that viruses are a little bit smaller than bacteria and bacteria cells you should know that they are much smaller than animal or plant cells. And then moving on to the smaller structures uh, like these, you would know that the atom is the smallest measurable structure that we have uh, and that we could, uh, we could potentially detect under the electron microscope. So that will be all for today's lecture and in the next one, we're going to take a look at the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells as well as animal and plant cells.